Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about something I call the weather map acoustic. Obviously an aim to get your attention, so I hope I have it right now. We can talk about it because I think if you step back a little bit in physics and look at the big picture and try to make the things that go on uh, based on the laws of physics and acoustics in our room, if you compare them to other things that we're more familiar with, it might help facilitate understanding, hopefully, okay? So let's talk about our room as a weather map. Now we watch weather all the time, a lot of people do, more than necessary I think sometimes, but what do we have in a weather map? Remember from your eighth grade science classes that we have areas of high and low pressure. Now in a weather map, these areas of high and low pressure are really, the pressure is really created by the rotation of the winds in that particular pressure area. I can't remember if a high, the winds rotate counterclockwise or clockwise and the low the other way, but they're opposite in their rotations. That much I remember. So we have a series of high and low pressure areas across the whole surface area of our rooms, okay? So we don't have any rotation of winds, hopefully in our room. <laughs> Not that I've seen lately in 12 years, but we do have pressure. So we can kind of equate the pressure to the rotating winds, okay? Now the pressure is all based on wavelength. The length of the frequencies that won't fit in the room or are not compatible with the dimensions of the room or the volume of the room. Same thing if we had probably winds in our room. If we had a high or a low pressure cell inside of our rooms, it would do something that we really need to do to most of the rooms I see today, and that's blow them up, okay? Get rid of them, because the best sound is no room at all. But we don't have that. So we have wavelengths of energy that don't fit, and then that creates our areas of high and low pressure in our room. And that's what we have to address when we're dealing with sound because areas of high and low pressure exaggerate some frequencies, meaning make them larger, more pronounced, and you can see that on an RTA measurement, real-time measurement, or they attenuate, they cause the dips. So the exaggeration are peaks, attenuation are the dips. So what are you gonna hear in those? You're gonna hear more or less energy. You're gonna hear more or less sound. You can be in a null, in a room, let's call it 150 cycle null. You can EQ that null all you want, boost it, boost it, boost it until you blow the EQ up. The room is not gonna let you hear it. You're gonna to have to treat the room or get a new room. So you're gonna hear less or you're gonna hear more. So attenuation or exaggeration, those are the two things that we'll deal with. What are our workarounds? You can talk to any mixing engineer about this because he does it all the time if his room's not the way he wants it. Workarounds, you pick a, a location between the high and low pressure areas where you don't have this exaggeration and attenuation, hard to find in small rooms. Probably the location that you're looking for is not an ideal location for your usage. So treatment is the key. Room dimensions are the key. Room volume are the key from the beginning. If you get it right at the beginning, you minimize the amount of treatment, you minimize the amount of exaggeration and attenuation, and you minimize the amount of low and high pressure areas in the room. So I hope this helps a little bit. Weather map acoustic, kind of a play on words here, but think of your room as a weather map with areas of high and low pressure. Now our goal is not to sit between them, so we hear everything. Our goal obviously is treatment, and we have the technology to do that. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.